Okay, so welcome everybody um, to Intro to PowerPoint. Uh, these are the things I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to tell you a little bit of who I am, and we're going to go over parts of the screen, um, including some of the different views that you can see. And I'll talk about layouts, transitions and animations, themes and graphics. And then I have a tips and tricks summary sheet um, that I can send you um, if you're interested. It, it goes over a lot of what I, I talk about here, but it also has some extra information. So uh, my name is Susan Spitzberg, and I've been teaching a little over 30 years. Um, I've been at Rasmussen University for a little over 10. And um, there I teach computer applications, which is Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and a little bit of hardware. Um, I also teach a six-week class in Excel. And um, I do some technical writing for the school. So whenever one of these things, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, needs to be rewritten because a new version comes out, I get to do that. So I have a lot of fun with that. Um, my new hat is I am now also teaching at Bellevue University in Nebraska, um, just starting semester two. This semester, I have two classes instead of one. <laughs> it's going to be very interesting to see how that goes. Um, and al along with that, you know, in a previous life, I worked 15 years uh, at different help desks and taught uh, part time. So now I'm retired, um, and I say semi-retired because I'm doing what I love best, which is teaching. And at Rasmussen, I was online instructor of the quarter two different times. So you can tell that I kind of get into this. So the one thing I want to mention before we start um, and is the seven by seven rule. And it's really not a rule, it's more of a suggestion because you're going to see that even on this screen, I've got one bullet that doesn't have seven by seven, seven uh, words on it. But a slide should have no more than seven bullets. And if you find that on a slide, you're going to have more than seven bullets, you should really take a good look at the material and see if maybe you can split it into two different slides. Um, along with that, a bullet should not have more than seven words. What you need to remember when you're doing a PowerPoint is that you're not sla slapping everything on the PowerPoint. You're going to be using this as an outline to talk about um, your subject. And if you have um, more than seven words, which goes into the next one, if you're not using phrases, if you're using sentences or paragraphs, your audience doesn't need you. Um, they can just read the stuff and wait until you go on to the next screen and maybe you know, uh, think about your transitions or your animations or you know, what they're eating for breakfast the next morning or something like that. Um, I had an example of this um, where I worked at a company and um, the CEO thought he knew Microsoft Office really well. And we were, we were having a quarterly meeting. And so he put his slides together and every bullet had a paragraph. And as you can imagine, you know, we all read the paragraphs because you can read louder, faster in your mind than he can read out loud. And then we would just kind of doze off until he went on. Before the presentation, I had one of the consultants come to me and say, I've never done a PowerPoint. I need some help with you. And I explained the seven by seven rule and I helped him put his photographs on. And he gave this demonstration and it was fantastic. And then at the end, everybody came running up to him to tell him what a wonderful thing he had done. And nobody came up to the CEO to tell him that his was really good. So you want to, you know, you want to be careful with this. You don't want to overload your screens um, because you're going to be talking about this. Your presentation is an outline. OK, and um, as I said, rule is really a suggestion because you can see that, you know, on my fourth bullet, I've got one, two, three, four. I've got a little more than than um, seven words. Um, but as long as you try and stick to it, you're going to have a really good presentation. So I have a, a tips and tricks summary sheet that's available to you if you're interested. Um, this is my personal email, officeguru at gmail.com. Um, I can also, I would tell you, I would send you the PowerPoint, except that I usually don't save it at the end so that I can use it again um, when I do this again. So let's get started. First, I'm going to talk about the parts of the screen, but I'm going to actually pull up a new um, PowerPoint here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so when you first come into a, a new PowerPoint presentation file, this is what you're going to see. And at the top, you have your QA toolbar. QA talks, stands for quick access, okay? Next to that, you're going to have the name of the file if you've saved it. And if you haven't, it's gonna say new Microsoft PowerPoint um, presentation. 
Um, I like the quick access toolbar because what it does is it allows you to put um, things from the ribbon, which I'm going to talk about in a second, but you can put different things from um, down here on the ribbon up there so that if you're someplace else and you can't see it on the ribbon, you can um, actually still use it. I have a uh, print preview and print up here for all of them and for save. If you want to add some more, a good way to do it is to just hit the down arrow and you can see that um, I have print preview and print and spelling up here. And if I wanted to put something else on here like um, save, well, save is up there already, even though it isn't um, check mark. Okay, so let's say I want to put open up there. And so open is up there. And if you decide you don't want it, you can just right click it and say remove from quick access toolbar. Now their quick access toolbar is in every one of the office applications, but you do have to set them up individually. Um, of course, because you're gonna have stuff in PowerPoint that you're not gonna have in Excel and vice versa. Um, so, you, you know, um, what I did find, which I thought was very interesting was that when I um, went to a newer version of Microsoft Office, some of my uh, quick access toolbars came through already set up and some of them didn't. Now, technically they're not supposed to at all. So it was very, very interesting that they did. So under the toolbar, you have your ribbon, which is divided into sections and each section has a tab. And within each section, uh, within each toolbar, because as you can see, the toolbar changes every time I hit a tab. So within each one of the ribbons, which is here, um, you will have a section and the section is going to have names of things you can do. And a lot of them are grayed out now because I don't have any text on the screen, but you can see under the font section, it'll, uh, you'll be able to bold, italicize and underline. And then we have a paragraph section and the clipboard and the font and the paragraph, you're going to see in every one of the other Microsoft applications. Um, Excel and Word will have them next to each other. They won't have the slide area because this is specific to PowerPoint. So I'm going to click to add the first slide. And what you see here is um, we have these um, little boxes, okay? And um, these are going to be um, used for when we do this. And um, these are um, uh, app, these are holders for our, our stuff so that if we click to add a title, it's going to hold the title. And um, if we click to add a subtitle, it's going to um, add the stuff over there. So um, also, before I start doing this, let me show you that you have three parts. This is the normal screen, okay? So this is the slide view that you're going to be working with. This is the slide sorter view, and you're going to see that this is kind of these slides are kind of like on a, a magnetic board. So after we have a few of them, if we wanted to, we could we could change them, or we could click on one to go really quickly to another slide. Down at the bottom, you have the notes section. The notes section is for you to kind of practice with. Um, it's not going to show up when you do your presentation. Um, some people um, in business will have actually have two monitors. And they will have one monitor that is showing the presentation, and then they will have the other monitor that is um, not showing it so they can read their notes. But just so you know, when you when most of us only have one monitor, um, the notes are not going to show up when we go to show the presentation. Okay, so um, what we're going to do here is um, our game plan for today is that I am a travel agent and I am setting up a presentation trip that our company is offering to Chicago, Illinois. So this would be like a seminar where people were invited to come and see about this. And uh, I'm going to give the audience all the information about, the, about this trip. So I'm going to say that this is a Chicago tour. And then for this placeholder, I'm going to put in A1 Travel uh, Agency. You're going to find that I cannot type and talk at the same time. And I'm going to put my name here. And then underneath here, I'm going to put the cost. Okay, now if I wanted to change anything, like maybe the, um, make this bigger, um, the easiest way to do that is to click on the dotted lines. And then you can change the uh, font size. And a really cool button, which is on all the applications, is this increased font size. So that if you're not sure, if you wanted to make it 62 or 65, you can just click this a couple of times 
and it'll keep making it bigger until you decide that it's big enough. And if you make it too big, you can use the one next to it and just make it a little bit smaller. So using these two buttons is an easy way to uh, get your title the way you want it. And notice that it is centered between the walls of your placeholder. It is not centered between the, mar the edges of the paper. Okay, so I want to put a new slide on here. Now, this is the title slide, and it's an animal all by itself. Um, but for the next slide, I can either click the slide button or I can pick out which one of these uh, slide things that I want. Okay, and if I just click the button, I'm going to get title and content because that's the one that's used the most. And in title and content, you can add your title. And then underneath here, you can do things like insert a table, um, insert a chart, uh, smart art graphic, 3D models, all of this stuff, which you can also do from the insert tab. So you don't have to worry once you click to add text here to use the bullets, these, these little boxes will go away, but you can always add something. So for this one, we're going to say that this is going to, we're going to talk about the hotel. So we're going to say that this is the Radisson. Blue Aqua Hotel. Ah, got that right without having any any typos. Okay, so it's near the Magnificent Mile, and it's state of the art. And I've looked all of this up ahead of time. You know that the sill, the teeth. Okay, indoor and outdoor pools and underground parking. Very important in Chicago. If you've ever been there, I know that. Okay, now what we're going to do here is we're going to add a design tab. Um, and you want to do that kind of quickly because um, if you wait too long and you have a lot of stuff on there, some of the design tabs are going to change. Um, where you, how your text looks, it might, it might put it on an angle and you'll wind up having to redo a lot of slides. So if you do this first, you'll see that um, it, it's very helpful. Also the title slide, which I said is a different animal, usually comes out looking a little bit different than the rest of the slides. So I'm gonna click on design and I have a bunch of themes here. And as you can see down, at, uh, whenever you have a panel like this, you've got three buttons here. Um, the first one is grayed out because I can't go higher, but this one will let me go row by row, and this one will open them all up, okay? Now, I don't like to open them all up because you can go shopping. Let's get out of this for a minute. You can go shopping for one of these themes, and as you point to it, it's going to show you what it's going to do. And if you have the whole thing open, then you can't always tell. And then if... If I click on the middle one, that just goes down row by row, okay? And if you pick out something, I'm gonna pick out um, this one facet. You can also change the colors here in the variants. So I'm gonna, because it's blue, I'm just gonna make this one blue, okay? Now, something that was added to Office 365, which is really cool, is this design ideas here. Okay, and um, design ideas let you get this really fancy without doing a lot of work. So you can see, you know, this would have taken you about 10 steps to do otherwise, and it would have been really hard to get the black here. So I'm gonna go backwards for a minute, and um, I, because one of the things I'm gonna do is gonna show you how cool these design ideas are. I'm actually gonna put a picture of Chicago on the first tab. So I'm gonna click on pictures, and under, uh, hit the down arrow, I can do pictures from this device, which would be if I had moved some pictures from my camera or my tablet over to uh, this computer, then I could have put them on from there. Uh, stock images is something that comes with PowerPoint now. We're gonna do this uh, later. It's a library of things. But when you go to online pictures, this actually goes out to the web and searches for, a, for pictures for you. So I'm just gonna put in Chicago. Okay, and you got plenty of stuff to, to uh, choose from. So I'm going to choose the bean and I'm going to hit insert. And the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to come out really big. Now, the way that you can make it smaller, the easiest way that you can make it smaller is to use one of these. Um, let me get to the top here. Okay. Um, is to use 
one of these little circles that you see. Sometimes they come out in the corners. This one didn't. See, now it does. And you can use this. And what, by using uh, something close to the corner, you don't change the aspect ratio. Ra ratio. This means that the bee's not going to come. The bee's not going to come out tall and skinny, or short and fat, and wide. Okay. And now you can see with the design ideas here, if you want to do any of these, you can do these. I like this one. Okay. And again, this would have taken you uh, a long time to do. So we have our title. We have our hotel. So let's put in another slide. So if I just click the new slide button. I would get the title and content. But for this one, what we want to do is we want a comparison. So I'm going to hit the down arrow and select comparison. And what we're going to do here is we are going to say tourist attractions. OK, and I'm going to put in my tourist attraction. The first one is architectural boat tour. And then I can put in my bullets that tell you a little bit about the boat tour. Okay. It has awesome views of the city. Oops. All right. And you can learn about designs, people, and innovations behind the buildings. And then every time I hit enter, I get a new bullet. And then the last one is covers all three branches of the Chicago River. All right. And so for our second one, we're going to do Museum of Science and Industry. Okay, now you can see that this one comes out on two lines. And now this is a personal preference of mine. I don't like this when it does that. And the only way that I could fix it, and this, you won't have this all happen with different themes. It depends on the theme that you took, but I'm gonna make this smaller so it fits. And then I'm gonna make this one smaller. And this one, I'm just going to hit the dotted line and make it smaller because I like, I like these things to kind of line up, okay? So for Museum of Science and Industry, we're going to say 35,000 artifacts. Okay, a variety of hands on exhibits. And explore stars and planets at the Henry Crown Space Center. Okay. Now, because it's, it's um, doing two sets of things here, there's no design for this slide. And that's okay, because you don't wanna go overboard with them, okay? So for the next one, we want title and content again. So we can't just hit new slide because we'll, we'll get the same layout that we had here. So I'm gonna go back here and select title and content. And for the fourth one, we're gonna put in one of the restaurants that we would um, go see is Eggy or go eat at actually Eggie's Diner, okay? And Eggie's Diner has build your own omelet. And it also has something called green eggs and ham. And of course you would probably discuss this a little bit more. And so I'm gonna put in a picture of green eggs and ham. And there's plenty to choose from, which is amazing to me. I like this one. So we'll insert that. And you can see here too, we can put in different design ideas. So I could pick that one, but I'm also gonna do a control Z because one of the things that's a problem with some of these design ideas is that when we get to animations later, it won't let you animate some of the, the pictures that you put in. So for this one, I'm just going to leave egg, green eggs and ham here, okay? And now for the next um, slide, I want a title only slide here. So I'm just going to click on there. 
And then I'm going to put in Chicago as one of the world's last free zoos. Okay. Now, if I decide that I like the size of this, but I'd like it to be on one line, I can use this little circle here and stretch it out. And then because Zeus is coming into the black and I might not like that, I can take this and drag this over here a little bit. Okay, because you know this little thing over here, then you don't have to worry about it going over there. And for this one, what I'm gonna put in is a picture from the stock images. And since I want, and you can see all the different things that you can do here. If you get a chance, go through some of these because they're really, some of them are really funny. Um, but what we're just going to do today, and for the um, because of time, is we're going to put something in the zoo. Let's let's take the gorilla this time, okay? And again, we don't want them this big. Now, you know, if you're on it, there you can change the size here. But nobody ever comes over your shoulder and says, "Oh, make this 5.5 by three and a half or something." Everybody just kind of eyeballs it. So we can just put it in here and we can drag it if we need it to make it centered and we're okay there. Okay. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to make a um, motivational slide to motivate people. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna use a title only. Uh, no, we're not. We're gonna use uh, title and content. Okay, but we're going to delete the title, all right, because we just want the content. So if I click on the dotted lines, and when you click on them, you can see that it makes it a, a straight line. It connects all the dots, okay? And I'm just going to hit delete. And then for this one, I'm going to say there's always something going on in Chicago. And then... Don't miss out. Book today. You still don't want to mix out. Okay. And here too, I might want to make this bigger so I can, well, I don't want to be that big. So I'll go back here. I like things on one line. So let's go back here. Okay. And here too, you know, if you wanted design ideas, you know, you could you could choose. Sometimes it takes a minute for them to come up. Different ways that you could do this, okay. And if you don't like all of this, you could do it something else. I'm just going to leave it there now, okay. Now, as you notice, we now have a lot of different things on the slide sorter view. So if I decided, for instance, that I wanted the tourist sites. Here's the tourist attractions to come after the restaurant. All I have to do is click on the restaurant and just drag it up. And then it just changes, it changes the order of things. So now we're going to have some fun. Okay. We're going to add some transitions to these slides. Now, what a transition is, is something that happens to the entire slide. Okay. So you can make the slide wipe, you can make it split, you can do all of these things. And again, we have a lot of things. Now here, what you need to do is click it, okay, to see how it looks. But then if you don't like it, and you change to another one, or else you click on none. Okay, so you can have a little fun with that. Um, and you can see you have subtle, you have exciting and dynamic content. And I always tell my students that it would depend on who you were giving the presentation to. If you're giving to a board of directors for a bank, you don't want real exciting stuff. You want stuff that's more subtle. Um, if you're giving it to a group of teenagers, go for it, okay? I'm gonna put curtains on here just because this is the one my students love the best for some reason, okay? All right, so for the second, and now you notice that there's a little star here. Um, it says play animations, but it really, it, it also plays transitions. So you can click on it to see what you've done in case you go away from this for a while and then you come back to it. Um, also, you can click the preview button and that will also show you. And once we hit and we uh, put animations on it, we'll show you both. Um, but let's, let's do some more transitions first. Now, let's say I want to wipe this one and you can see it comes in from the right to the left. You see the arrow here. Now, if you don't like it coming in from the right to the left, you can go to effect options 
and you can make it come in any place you want. So if I wanted to come in from the bottom, I can do that. And then as you can see, the effect options shows you, you know, where, where it's coming from. The one on the panel here will show you what the default is. The default is what the system uses unless you change it. So maybe we want the rest of them to all be the same. So instead of doing them one by one, we can click on the first one and hold the shift key down and click on the last one. And now whatever we put on is going to be on all of them. So let's say we want to, well, we don't want curtains, that takes too long. Okay, let's say we just want to wipe. Okay, so now they all have the little star and they're all going to wipe from left to right, okay? So that's what transitions are. Now, animations are things that will work for you um, on text and on pictures. But like I said, sometimes they don't work on when you've picked a design uh, tab. So let's, I think it'll work on here, but let's, let's give it a shot. So I'm going to select the, um, the whole placeholder and I'm gonna go to animations. Now they work the same way um, but um, if, you, if you turn this whole thing on, well, on this one, we can see it, okay? But there's sometimes that when you, you open the whole screen, you can't see what it is you're doing. So as you can see that that floated in and it floated in from the bottom. So if we wanted it to float in from the uh, top instead, uh, or yeah, it's the opposite, okay? So if you want it to float down, you know, you, you do that. Okay, so it also puts a little number here, but the numbers do not show when you uh, do the presentation. The numbers are just in case you have more than one, it shows you what order they're gonna be in. And now if you hit the uh, little star here, you can see that you can see both of them. So this one we'll leave alone, okay? But on it, you can also do um, pictures. So one of the things that's really cool with pictures is to do gross shrink. And because as you're talking about this, it will become bigger. And when you do the presentation, it actually will not go back down. It will stay big. So if it's, if it's something you're gonna talk about for a long time, gross shrink is good because the audience's eye will be on it while you're talking. Okay, so let, and you can also do a title. So let's do tourist attractions. And we'll have that fly in, okay? But we don't like it to fly in from the bottom. So we'll have it fly in from the left, okay? And then for the gorilla, let's make him spin. Okay, we'll make him swivel. Okay, and I see here that I have a little typo. So I'll backspace over this and fix it, okay? And then for the last one, um, Let's say we want this to fly in. Okay, and when you do this, you notice it's one and two. So they're gonna fly in one by one. And all of these are set for on click, okay? Which means that when you get onto the slide, you have to click it in order for it to work. Um, there are other ways to do this, except that I have found that uh, if I set duration, um, that is how long it's going to stay on a slide. And the problem with that is if you're on a slide and you've set it for, you know, like a half a minute and somebody asks you a question about it and you wind up spending more than a half a minute, it's going to go on to the next slide, even though you're talking. So I'm a control freak. I like to be able to click the slides when, when I want to click the slides. Okay, so let's put this together now. And there's a couple of different ways that you can show your presentation. One way is to click on the slideshow here and you can do from beginning or from current slide. The other way is down at the bottom, there's the views are down here. I'm not sure if you can see that in the recording, but the normal view is what we've been using and the slide sorter view, which I'm gonna show you in a second, um, is another way of looking at the slides. And then the slideshow view is here. So if we click on there, and you can see that um, our uh, transition, okay. And then I would say, you know, hi everybody, I'm Susan Spitzberg, blah, blah, blah. And this is what we're gonna talk about, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I click my mouse and it goes to the talking about the Radisson Blue Aqua Hotel, okay. 
And then, and you see, we wiped from right to left. And then I would talk about this and you notice that this did not start doing that until I clicked my mouse because we left everything on mouse. And then I would talk about the tours. Okay, and you see how nice this came up. And there's your tourist attraction. So um, in real life, I might not put that there because I would forget and I would start talking about this and then it would come up. So if you, you need to practice it to see how things work for you and then make any changes that don't work really well. So then we have Chicago as one of the world's last three zoos, zoos and then you have your Mr. Gorilla. And then there's always something going on in Chicago. Don't miss out book today. So the other thing I wanted to show you was the slide sort of view here and here too. These are, this is like a magnetic board. So if you want to change the order of this, say I want to have um, the eggs, Eggie's Diner after the tourist attractions, I can click and drag it. You also have the little stars down here so you can check and see whether or not you like what's coming up here. It's going to show you the, the transition and the animation. Okay, now a couple of things else I wanted to show you on this on the slideshow is that you can rehearse your timings. Okay, so um, and it's, it's got a whole little thing here that explains it. But what you can do is you can start your show and talk about it. If you turn this on, you start your show and you talk about it, and then you click on the next slide and you talk about it. So you practice, and at the end, it's going to come back, and at the bottom here, it's going to tell you how long you are on each slide. So it kind of gives you idea, an idea of how long it's going to take for your presentation to go from one end to the other. The other thing you can do is you can record. Um, so you can uh, click on it and click on the record and do your talking. And at the end, you can play it back. Now, this is good if you, you, know, you want to send this to somebody um, and you're not going to be there to do the presentation. Um, you can actually uh, show the presentation and it will also um, do the talking for you. Okay, so the other thing I wanna show you is that you have um, a notes page here. So you can do this and uh, distribute this to your um, audience. So any notes that you would have on the slides would be on here. My recommendation is that you not uh, give this to them until the end because if you pass it out at the beginning, they're all gonna be looking at this instead of looking at you. So um, this is, you know, and when you're, when you're in your notes, I'll go back to that in a minute. Let's go back to normal view. And you do add notes here. Um, you can bold on them, you can underline, you can do everything that you would do, you know, if you were doing a Word document. You can even spell check. So if you are going to pass it out to people, um, you want it to be perfect. Okay. Um, okay. So let's see what else I'm going to show you. Okay. So you can also from the view get to your normal view. Um, I very seldom use outline view, but um, it does tell you, it shows you what you have. Okay. Um, even if you're not on it. Um, the nice thing about outline view, and you'd have to do some research on this because I haven't really done this for a long time. But you can make an outline in Word and you can suck it into PowerPoint and your your heading, your titles would be, you know, your headings number, you know, Roman numeral one, Roman numeral two, Roman numeral three. And then everything under it would be bullets. So, you know, that's something that you can do. Um, your slide sorter, I showed you before, your notes page. I don't use the reading view very much, okay, because you can't really make any changes to it. Okay. I just uh, exited out by hitting escape. So um, that is everything I have on PowerPoint, but I wanna show you what I have for you. Um, if you wanna send me an email, I have a tip, tips and tricks sheet for PowerPoint, um, goes over all of these things, um, the parts of the screen. Um, if you're not sure what version of PowerPoint you have, you can click on file, click on account, and then it will show you here. Okay, if you have a really old version, it's going to say file um, inform, uh, information or more. Um, but 
everything except the design ideas is in the uh, is in the earlier versions of PowerPoint. The only thing that's not is those design tips that come out on the side. Okay, so you have all of your um, different parts of the screen, how to find your version. Um, here's how to add a theme. And I said, do this fairly soon because, you know, otherwise you'll wind up having to adjust some of your text, play with the variants to get a color that you like. Transitions will get you from one side to another. Um, animations will make objects on the screen move um, and you can do text or pictures. Um, and you can always take them off if you don't like one or the other. Um, you can take them off. Just use a, the first button. Um, you can insert pictures online. Um, those are graphics from the internet. You can do them from stock. These are built into PowerPoint. Um, these devices, photos you move from your phone or your camera to your PC. Placeholders help you position text and graphics. Okay, you click the dotted lines to select all the text. Um, and the items are centered between dotted lines, not between the margins. Another thing I want to mention about the placeholders is that um, if you used um, a certain layout and the placeholder, you didn't use a placeholder, it's a good idea to, to delete it um, because, well, actually, I can't think of a, a really good reason except that I, don't, I like things to be perfect in case I do give the, the file to somebody um, without them running it, I want it to look perfect for them. And if you leave placeholders around there uh, that you haven't used, um, it just makes the file look kind of messy. Um, also remember the seven by seven suggestion, okay? No more than seven bullets on a slide, no more than seven words per line. Keep things simple, don't fill up the screen. And remember that the notes you do are for practice and won't show up when you present unless you have two monitors. Some useful keyboard shortcuts. You can also press the function five key to show the presentation. Um, you should always check your spelling. I didn't do it this time, but you can. Um, and a couple of more keyboard shortcuts, control B for uh, bolding the selected text. And you can do all of these, the B and the I um, by, uh, and I didn't put U in there, but you can underline by control U, um, is clicking the placeholder, you know, making the, uh, making the dotted lines into a regular line and then um, it will bold or italicize or underline everything that's in the placeholder. If you wanna just do one of the words in the placeholder, you have to double click on it and then um, do change your formatting. Control C, if you copied selected text, maybe you put some text on a, on a slide and you decided that you wanted it on a, different, uh, on a different slide also, you can copy it and then paste it. Um, if you uh, wanna uh, take it off a slide, and put it on another one, that would be control X, um, which I'll probably add here because I didn't have this, okay? Okay, now, if you want some more information about PowerPoint, um, if you're looking to do something specific, all right, this is what I recommend to all my students. Um, use, you know, do a Google search um, and start with PowerPoint with your version, okay? You now know how to do your version because you click on file account. Um, but I would say PowerPoint 365. And the reason for that is if you just put in PowerPoint, um, you're going to get all kinds of things from earlier versions of PowerPoint. And I learned this the hard way, not from, from PowerPoint, but um, there was one year where I wanted to find out what, when library week was. <laughs> you can appreciate that since we're on the library right now. And I just put a search in for library week. And I found when I took off the top one, because usually they're in order of, you know, the best to the least. And I stuck it on my calendar. And then it turned out that that was not library week of that year. It was library week of a different year. And I missed library week altogether. Um, so if I do library week now, I put in this year so that I know what it is. So you want to put in uh, PowerPoint with the version, and you want to put PowerPoint because if you're going to how to add, so tra add transitions, that's going to be specifically to PowerPoint. But you might there might be some other things that you are looking up that would work in other things besides PowerPoint. So you want to put PowerPoint with the version, and I like to add how to, and then what I'm trying to find how to add um, or use trans. It could be one of you know how to use transitions or add transitions, but probably not both. Okay. How to use transitions. Okay. And by adding how to, as you can see down here, 
um, you may get a tech board where somebody has asked that question and then underneath it is the answer that you're looking for. You will also possibly get now because things have changed a lot is you will get training sites. Um, one of them will be Microsoft because Microsoft has a lot of training out there now um, and um, you can get some answers that way. Basically what you want is you don't want to get 5,000 hits on how to use transitions. You want to get one or two that are going to explain it to you correctly. Often what I do is once I, I click on this, because I do this too, um, I'm, I'm doing this a lot of times because I'd like to find different wording for stuff that I'm teaching. If I, especially if I taught something and it was confusing to the students, I'm looking for a different way to present it. And I can often find that by doing searches. And some of the things that will come up on a search are YouTube videos. And you can also do this on a YouTube video, put in PowerPoint, you know, 365, how to use transitions. Um, and you will get some very good videos that will help you with this. Okay, obviously you won't get a tech board then, but you will get, you will get some good videos. Um, now, where to find good videos besides YouTube that I just mentioned, gcflearnfree.org. Um, subjects dash office and then you can select your version um, has really good videos and what i like about this site is that um, it also has you can download a transcript so that um, you can have what they're talking about and you can also download the file that they use they make you go through hoops so you have to sign something that you know you're not going to use it for i can't use theirs for teaching because they don't want you to um, but you could download the file you could download the transcript and then after you watch the video, you can try it out yourself. Um, so it's really uh, another uh, one good way to learn. As I mentioned, YouTube is good. Um, Support.office.com and then click training has really, really good videos now um, on, on the different aspects of all the Microsoft Office uh, applications. Um, this library has a Linda um, subscription. Um, so um, it, Linda has some very good training classes uh, in all the different Microsoft Office um, applications. Um, if you don't mind sitting through class, many of the local colleges have PowerPoint classes, Wabansi, College of DuPage, Elgin Community College, and you have to check their catalogs to see when they're offered. Um, if you want to throw more money at it, uh, CTS training, uh, it says it's in Warrenville, but it's actually the Naperville exit off of 88. Um, uh, and they're also in Schaumburg and Northbrook. I taught there for three years. All of their uh, instructors are Microsoft certified and um, you get a, a training manual and then they have the training materials online. So after the class, you can go online and go through the materials again on your own. And if you're not happy, now I can't guarantee this anymore because it's been a number of years since I taught there. But when I did teach, if you weren't happy with the class, you could retake it for free within six months of when you took it. But you'd have to check their website to see if that um, is really true altogether now. And um, again, if you have any questions about this or you want this uh, tips and tricks thing, then um, why don't you uh, send me an email and I'll attach it and send it to you quickly. So that is pretty much everything that I have today for you. Um, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Do you have any questions, Elliot? <laughs> no, no questions. Although I will say, you know, I I really appreciate you doing this because I've I've actually uh, uh, used a lot of the tips that you've um, given in the uh, presentation. Um, since I saw it, you know, I I kind of had that problem of a. Uh, writing the whole paragraphs of text on my, uh, <laughs> slides. And so that seven by seven rule, especially even just right from the start there, that seven by seven rule, uh, I really started kind of cleaning up some of the slides that I'm doing. And, uh, you know, I try to have some fun with the animations and the design ideas too. So I really appreciate the, uh, all of the uh, tips and all the good advice that you've got in, uh, in this uh, workshop. Well, thank you.